I'm joined today by Jerry LaMagna, LCSW. Jerry is a senior faculty member at the AEDP Institute and is a private practice psychotherapist in Manhattan and Westfield, New Jersey. Jerry is joining me today to discuss a session he and I recorded together several months ago. He'll be pausing the video periodically to explain what's going on in the context of AEDP theory. Jerry, I'm excited to have you with me today and let's get into it and break down what's happening in this session. Great, Niall. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for having me. And I look forward to having an opportunity to go through the material with you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to this teaching module on accelerated experiential dynamic psychotherapy, often better known by its acronym AEDP. Over the next hour or so, you'll be watching a demonstration of AEDP that was condensed and edited down for the purposes of teaching. It preserves and illustrates the sequence of steps that spontaneously unfolded in my work with the volunteer, and I think does a pretty good job of capturing the process and spirit of AEDP clinical work. At various points, I'll come in and explain what you're observing through the lens of AEDP. We have an opportunity here to um, have an experience of AEDP and if there's time to reflect on your experience, if you want. So um, do you have a sense of a particular area or a topic that you would want to focus on for what we're going to be doing today? Or? I do. Yeah. So there's a, a long, long standing experience that I have that goes back really as far as I can remember uh, that I've learned to just override and work through over the years, but it, it still always happens. And, and the phenomenon is uh, that anytime I have to ask somebody for something, um, oftentimes if it involves a, a, like picking up the phone, there's this instant anxiety that I feel, just a, a wave of anxiety and a desire to flee the task and to avoid the task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not do it, and it's and it's, and it's because there's a, a this just default assumption that I have that the person is gonna two things that the person will say no, and that the person will be annoyed with me for ask that I'll actually generate some negative feelings mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the person in in asking. Okay, so first of all, I wanna I'd like to really appreciate the fact that you're willing to for the sake of this demo to actually do something that is real mm -hmm. and something that matters to you. Mm -hmm. um, I think that takes a lot of courage to do that. And um, I appreciate your willingness to, to, to be open with me and authentic with me around this. And uh, you didn't have to. And uh, I appreciate that you did take that step into uh, to being real here. So I just want to make that explicit and appreciate that. So here the client and I are beginning to settle in together. We're just meeting. And it's important in AEDP to create a foundation of safety and support from our first moments together. With the client, I came into this space feeling appreciative that he offered himself and a genuine concern for the purpose of the demo. And so I explicitly shared it. This disclosure is setting the tone for and modeling openness and authenticity that I'm going to be helping the client embody throughout the session. In ADP, we say make the implicit explicit and the explicit experiential. So we see here my disclosure, and in a moment we'll be witnessing a brief version of an intervention we call metaprocessing. How is it for you to hear my words? In order to get a sense of how my personal expression um, landed with the client, to get a sense of the client's receptivity to my sentiments. Yeah, it feels it feels important to use real material and something that and it, it actually is something that 
doesn't cause huge massive problems in my life it doesn't stop me from doing things but it it often slows things down a little bit i'll i'll wait a day or two before i do a ta you know take on a a task like that sometimes sure or i'll i'll forget uh huh <laughs> sure so so we can begin to explore that but i just wanted to check in with you around how it was for me to acknowledge that I felt uh, a warm feeling. Um, something, it felt, it, something felt very good. I felt very validated. Um, touched. Mm. Surprised. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So I hope to meet your courage with... Uh, my best efforts to help you get something good out of our time together. Great. So, so if we, um, if you were to allow yourself to, um, think of a specific example, a specific time when you might have gone to pick up the phone, when you might have gone to ask somebody for something, um, when that came up for you, um, can you? Think of a time when that occurred? Easily. So there are two different um, ways that it comes up, two different types of situations that bring it up. One is, and it's the most benign thing, you know, my wife a couple weeks ago said, hey, can you call the credit card company and ask them to downgrade your card from this level to that level so that you avoid the $100 a year fee because we don't need it because we already got our travel points right from that mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. Could hardly have a simpler thing. And my, I initially felt, no, I don't want to call. They're going to say no. Okay. My cognitive mind knows that's an unlikely, almost impossible scenario, but and I, I frankly avoided it for several days. She asked me after a few days. Yeah. So there was this, there was this gasp that you just let out just now as you were uh -huh. describing the scene with your wife, that first gasp. If you could just let yourself to notice in your body that feeling. I mean, I really feel it in the upper part of my lungs and going up into my throat. Uh -huh. And it does, I, I was not aware that I did that gasp or only barely aware of it until you mentioned it, but I can feel it Yeah, up here. Okay. Some important elements of ADP become evident here in the clinical work. The first element involves the maintenance of an experiential focus. As the client shares about their presenting problem, I want to stay close to his embodied experience of sensation and affect as they arise. The second element is the moment-to-moment -moment tracking of his felt experience. A noting of emergent experiential markers or tells that indicate the manifestation of healthy, meaningful, and often mobilizing affect, which we call core affect. Or there may also be the potential triggering of anxiety or various forms of defense that can come up to block the client's contact with this kind of affective experience. Connecting with and processing core affect is particularly important in AEDP because such experiences provide the fuel, essentially, that propels the clients through the four state transformational process. To simplify, I can say that um, I'm working to help the client move from state one, where there are either symptoms or distress, defenses or anxiety, into state two, where there's an opening to a contact with and a processing of core affective experience and the healthy action tendencies associated with them. In this moment, my hunch is that the sensations the client is describing represents an anxiety triggered by a deeper unsettling and yet to be discovered affect that is experientially nearby. And so I work to help regulate the anxiety and to explore it with an eye towards determining the underlying feelings that lie at the root of the client's presenting problem. Yeah. And if you were to describe that anxiety, does it feel more like it's near the surface of your chest, deeper in? Is it 
pulsating? Is it steady, cool, or, or warm? Thank you. 